We should note, then, as matter worthy of memory and something to be recalled with reverence what he did. Three years prior to his death, at the town of Greccio, on the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. There was a certain man in that area named John, who had a good reputation, but an even better manner of life. Blessed Francis loved him with special affection, since, despite being a noble in the land and very honored in human society, he had trampled the nobility of the flesh under his feet, and pursued instead the nobility of the spirit. As usual, Blessed Francis had John summoned to him some fifteen days prior to the birthday of the Lord. If you desire to celebrate the coming feast of the Lord together at Greccio, he said to him, hurry before me and carefully make ready the things I tell you. For I wish to enact the memory of that babe who was born in Bethlehem, to see as much as is possible with my own bodily eyes the discomfort of his infant needs, how he lay in a manger, and how, with an ox and an ass standing by, he rested on hay. Once the good and faithful man had heard Francis's words, he ran quickly and prepared in that place all the things that the holy man had requested. Finally, the day of joy has drawn near. The time of exultation has come. From many different places, the brethren have been called. As they could, the men and women of that land with exultant hearts prepared candles and torches to light up that night whose shining star has enlightened every day and year. Finally, the holy man of God comes and Finding all things prepared, he saw them and was glad. Indeed, the manger is prepared, the hay is carried in, and the ox and the ass are led to the spot. Their simplicity is given a place of honor. Poverty is exalted, humility is commended, and out of Greccio is made a new Bethlehem. The night is lit up like day, delighting both man and beast. The people arrive ecstatic at this new mystery of new joy. The forest amplifies the cries, and the boulders echo back the joyful crowd. The brothers sing, giving God due praise, and the whole night abounds with jubilation. The holy man of God stands before the manger, filled with heartfelt sighs, contrite in his piety, and overcome with wondrous joy. Over the manger, the solemnities of the Mass are celebrated, and the priest enjoys a new consolation. The holy man of God is dressed in the vestments of the Levites, since he was a Levite, and with full voice sings the Holy Gospel. Here is his voice, a powerful voice, a pleasant voice, a clear voice, a musical voice, inviting all to the highest of gifts. Then he preaches to the people standing around him and pours forth sweet honey about the birth of the poor king in the poor city of Bethlehem. Moreover, burning with excessive love, he often calls Christ the babe from Bethlehem whenever he means to call him Jesus. Saying the word Bethlehem in the manner of a bleating sheep, he fills his whole mouth with sound, but even more with sweet affection. He seems to lick his lips whenever he uses the expressions Jesus or babe from Bethlehem, tasting the word on his happy palate and savoring the sweetness of the word. The gifts of the Almighty are multiplied there, and a virtuous man sees a wondrous vision. For the man saw a little child lying lifeless in the manger, and he saw the holy man of God approach the child and waken him from a deep sleep. Nor is this vision unfitting, since in the hearts of many the child Jesus has been given over to oblivion. 
Now he is awakened and impressed on their loving memory by his own grace through his holy servant Francis. At length, the night's solemnities draw to a close, and everyone went home with joy. <laughs>